Hey guys, Slash Prep here, and welcome to another video. Today, I have a, another Nightmare on Elm Street Black Flame book review. This time, a Nightmare on Elm Street The Dream Dealers, written by Jeffrey Thomas, and again, as all other three books that I've reviewed so far, published by Black Flame. This time, I have a special guest on the show. Introduce yourself. I am the 80s slasher librarian, Josh LaRue. I gave him shout outs in my last video and uh, linked his channel because he makes audiobooks out of the Black Flame books because they're really rare and for anyone who doesn't want to spend a uh, hundred bucks for some of them uh, on Amazon or Abbey Books or anything or eBay uh, you can just listen to them on his channel. And the book he's reviewing today is uh, my personal favorite out of the Black Flame series. Why is it your favorite? The premise of the book is uh, really entertaining in my opinion. Uh, as you're gonna explain there's like a video game system, a virtual reality system called the Transbox, and this company makes the uh, experiences for it. It's not, it's not games per se, it's memories and dreams and nightmares that you can relive. Well, this uh, one kid, the main character goes and pulls, he, he's working two jobs. He's working for a place that extracts dreams and he's working for a Transbox software company. And unbeknownst to the software company, he's been stealing some dreams from his other job that are from the victims of Freddy Krueger. But we'll get to that in a minute. I'll let you... Uh... Yeah. What, what so, I love about it is it gives Freddy a whole new uh, platform, you know, to reach his victims. Yeah, it's definitely the most, like, original story. I mean, the ones that I've read so far, so uh, all the ones except for For Chance's Dream, you have, like, pretty straightforward uh, stories. It all just Freddy and the kids, you know, and somehow... Freddy gets alive again and, well, Freddy slashes him up, <laughs> just like in the movies, you know. Uh, but this one actually has a, like, a really inventive story, I would even go far as to say inventive story. Uh, really original, unlike anything you've read or seen in any other Freddy story. Would have made a great movie, I think. Yeah, I mean, it would have still it would still make a great movie, I would even say. If, if, uh, yeah, they, uh, they could update it, you know. I know it's been 15 years, but... yeah. yeah. I don't have that kind of technology, so really it's not out of the, uh, it's not, it's not too extreme. I don't think, no, I think it's still work like that. With, with virtual reality nowadays and stuff, they could do like even something with that. I will say that Dream Spawn had more, uh, likable characters and more deep characters, but the story of this book kind of overshadows the throwaway characters that you have. You know, the character, the character development's not that great, but the story holds its own, the plot, you know these uh, nightmares that, uh, and they don't even know what they've got at first, you know, they think it's just a scary dream, uh, mass hysteria, you know, yeah. until Freddy uh, starts getting his power back from more and more people going into it, and uh, the dreams were real inventive. It started off, what was it, the brother, uh, the main character's uh, little brother has friends that he takes these discs from his uh, developer brother and lets them play them if I remember correctly, and he's not, and they're not supposed to share it with more than one person, but he shares it with all of his friends. Yeah. <laughs> Freddy dreams, you know, and one of his friends has a blog, and she's wanting to upload these dreams to the internet for people to download on their own Transbox unofficially. So the potential's there for Freddy to infect the entire world. Yeah, and he dominates the, the world. High. The stakes are very high in this book. Yeah, definitely the highest they've ever been. I mean, it's not just Elm Street, it's the whole world, actually. The whole world is potentially at Freddy's fingertips. And at first, he don't realize what's going on, because yeah. these are old dreams. But once he realizes what they're doing, oh, Freddy loves it. He loves it! <laughs> so, um, I'll just read the synopsis here. Buy the brand new trans box. People are literally dying to get it. Uh, now you can record your dreams. Experience the sensations of another person's mind. You can enjoy their sweetest dreams or thrill at their worst nightmares. Did someone say nightmares? Freddy Krueger, the twisted dream demon, has found himself a whole new digital playground. The ultimate accessory has just become a vessel for the evil Freddy to spread like a virus. Will, will he be stopped or will the on horror of Freddy go global? So, uh... Yeah, that's that's basically the premise of this book, and it's really original, actually. And there's not really any dull moments. It's exciting from cover to cover. They keep the pace steady. It never really... Yeah. You don't end up with a lot of filler chapters like a, a lot of the other Black Flame books. No, yeah. 
And now, I will warn people, the dreams are repetitive, but they're different enough between each person. Like, they're, they're reliving someone's nightmare, but the nightmare warps and changes uh, and transforms based on their memories and their thoughts and their, their religious beliefs and stuff like that. Yeah, so, I thought that was, like, pretty creative, too. Like, we've never seen that before. No, and that, that was really neat. And uh, Freddy's pissed in this book. He's been forgotten for, uh, I think, 20 years is what the book says. Yeah. <laughs> he's not going to... He's not going to let that happen again. You know, we're not going to give away any uh, the ending or anything of this book. You should really read it. And if you cannot get a copy of it or find a copy, go over to my channel, The 80s Slasher Librarian. I narrated it, and it's an amazing book. You'll really enjoy it. But uh, Freddie enlists one of these uh, survivors of the book in his crusade of spreading these uh, dreams across the entire world for people to download. Yeah, I don't, I, there's just so much I could say about it, but I don't want to give away too much of the story on your channel here. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. The, the prologue was really good too. It's like a commercial for the trans box. Um, like, I mean, I, this is sort of like a uh, commercial too, but that's like a whole chapter of just the commercial for the trans box. And it's really cool actually to, uh, uh, to read and to listen to on your channel because you did like a commercial. Uh, hey, do so you want to buy one? So, yeah, <laughs> take my money, give me a trans box. I'll, I'll <laughs> I would definitely be up for it. I mean, I have a VR box, but uh, that's nothing compared to a trans box. Oh man, can you imagine being able to relive nightmares and, and memories and stuff? That'd be crazy. Yeah. And uh, these, these characters, uh, until Freddy gets his full powers. I believe a couple of them actually witnessed the way the person died, you know, but they don't, they didn't kill them because he didn't have his power yet. But so it's interesting to read how a character uh, experienced a death that wasn't permanent. You know, they felt themselves die, but they didn't die. But once Freddy got his power, all bets were off then, you know, it, just like any of the movies, it took Freddy a little longer, a little while to get his full power back because uh, Freddy's always gotten his power from uh, people remembering him and fearing him and spreading his name. That was really interesting what the uh, author did with that. I like that. I agree with you. That was really neat and wicked. The the imagery was was really good in this book. Yeah, I mean, at first I didn't really know what you how I felt about that because it's not, you know, classic Freddy with his you know, no. normal form or stuff and is, is uh, one-liners, like primetime bitch and all that sort of stuff, you know. But overall, it has grown on me, and I do kind of enjoy it. Uh, I don't hate it. I don't love it, too. Uh, uh, yeah, that's one thing we disagree on. Like, <laughs> I mean, I agree with you. Dream Spawn is a great book. And if not for the story of this book, Dream Spawn would be my favorite. Because the character development is so rich and so deep. But, I mean, this book has a great story, and it's also got so many edge-of-your-seat moments. Okay, the uh, burn victim in the hospital, when they're in that hospital room, remember that? And the guy's on the bed, and Freddy's at the door but can't get in. So, like, if they go out in the hallway, they're dead by Freddy. If they stay in the room, they're dead because there's a bomb on this guy's body that's ticking away. Yeah. <laughs> remember that? There's so many edge-of-your-seat moments in this book that... It keeps you it keeps you going you know you don't put this book down I had a hard time not doing the whole book in a couple uploads because usually I do two two maybe three chapters and upload each night or three or four days a week until yeah. the book finished but I couldn't wait to jump back into the next chapter the next chapter so I knocked this book out really fast it, it was hard to put down it was definitely a thrilling book too I, I agree with that <laughs> A good conclusion to the Black Flame Freddy series. You know, they went out with a bang, sure. Yeah, but they do kind of set up a sequel, but that never ended up happening. Like, this, this is actually like the last Freddy Krueger story or media, right? Was there like a book, like a non... or not like a, Not, not an original story after this, no. I think the only book that came out after this was uh, the Freddy vs. Jason novelization. You know, and that's that not. That one got released in 2003 with. Uh, oh, it what? That the movie came out in 03. Did the book come out in 03? Yeah, I think it just tied in with the. Uh, with then, the yeah, 
I don't think there's been another Freddy book since this one then at all. It's about time for, for some more uh, Freddy and Jason books to get written, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, definitely. It's been almost 15 years. Yeah, and I mean, with with Freddy, it's definitely possible. With, like, Jason, you got the lawsuit and stuff, so, uh, yeah, that might take a while. At least we got, we've got a lot of fan Jason movies getting made right now. There's some really cool ones coming out. Yeah. And I love how at the end of this book, without giving anything away, the characters try to do something to make sure this doesn't happen again, you know, or to stop it from getting worse. And in doing so, they actually ensure that it's going to. I don't want to, it's, it's confusing saying it that way, but I don't want to give away too many details. But they have this plan, but they don't execute this plan the right way. So you get to that point, like, oh, they're gonna, they're really gonna do this. And then at the end, it's like, oh man, they should have thought of that. <laughs> that's, that's what uh, Slasher Pepper was talking about setting up for a sequel. They could have had a really good sequel. Yeah, they could. I still think this, this would be uh, the way to go with like a new movie. I mean, you could also just go back to the basics, you know, just go back to Elm Street and have a, you know, simple uh, slicing and dicing. But uh, I think definitely think that um, having higher stakes and uh, and, a really original story like this one, uh, because, you know, Robert says he only has like, well, he says, you know, quote unquote, I think I have one left in me. But yeah, you know, that was what he said. So it's not like. He is gonna do two. He's, if he's gonna do one, it's probably gonna stay one. And a story uh, like this would be great for him because it would require a lot of CG in the Freddy scenes, and it would be less physically demanding on him. Yeah. Be so much CG work and stuff and practical effects. So, because uh, he does a lot of morphing in this book, in uh, different in different things. And the, the, some of the dreams are fun and have funny moments, but this the Freddy in this book he has his one-liners every now and then, but he's pretty pissed. You know, he's yeah. he's pretty he's business in this book. He's all business. And he's, he's, he's no get joking with, around. Very little, very little. So, uh, do you have anything else to say about the dream dealers? Uh, the only thing I got left to say is if you haven't read it, then get you a copy or head over and listen to it because it is worth the listen. As is uh, all the. Uh, all the uh, Freddy books that I've narrated, they're all really good. Even even the worst one, in my opinion, which was Suffer the Children, is still a fun book. Yeah, true. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like a throwback to uh, the Dream Warriors. But yeah. and then again, it also kind of feels like a ripoff, but just in modern day. Um, which is interesting to read, but it's definitely not as good as, like, no. say, the Dream Beaters or Pro-J or Dream Spawn, you know? And it had more potential, and it's like the writer got lazy. <laughs> it, you know, but it, it's it's still a good. The worst Freddy book out of the five books is still a good read. You know, it's still yeah. fun. And uh, we got to get you to listen to or read for Chance to Dream. Yeah. Before, because that one's really good too. That one, it's not my favorite, not even my second favorite, but it carries on the story from uh, uh, Not My Elm Street, The Dream Child. Definitely some good continuity there. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. But yeah, uh, I love your channel, man. I love your reviews. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'm glad somebody else is keeping these books in the public eye and keeping them alive. Yeah, definitely. I'm sure you'll put a link down below. I will, definitely. <laughs> so people can get to it. But yeah, come check out the book. If yeah, you thanks, don't... For, uh, thanks for being on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. And whenever you uh, finish For Chance to Dream, I want you to come over to my channel and uh, do a ranking of the books with me. Think you we can do that? We definitely will. That's Sounds that's going to be awesome. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. So, uh, any final words? Pleasant dreams! <laughs> See you guys. You're pissing me off, Roger. It's not